Today we will look at two of the most important sequences in mathematics. Uh, this one here, a n is equal to 1 plus 1 over n to the power of n, and b n is 1 plus 1 to the power of n plus 1. Both of these sequences converge to the number e, which is a number of comparable importance to, uh, for example, the number pi. <laughs> and uh, you think, well, these two sequences are very similar, or they're just different in this exponent. Well, that exponent makes a lot of difference. In fact, it causes completely different behavior for the two sequences. It's a, a bit difficult to foresee this, so we should mm, maybe not only prove all of this, well, we're going to prove all of this, but beyond that, maybe do some uh, graphical exploration. So let's see how these sequence behaves in a picture. There we go. Sequence a n is here, the green dots, and you notice that a n is increasing and it's monotone, monotone increasing and converging to e over here. And b n is the other way around though, very interesting. It's converging from above and it's also monotone. That's very interesting. Uh, these two sequences are really incredible and they both can be used as definitions of the number E and that's why they're important because E is very, very important. Okay, one thing you can see from here, you can sort of guess that the convergence is not all that fast. So let's just see a few examples of how that convergence goes. Well, the 25th term uh, of the sequence, well, we didn't get any decimals right compared to E. And at the 1,000th term, we got two. So that's slow, but it eventually gets there. Let's have a look at the B sequence. Likewise, it takes 1,000 terms before we get the first two right. And notice that the A's are increasing. They're approaching E from, from below. And the B's approach E from above. And that's the difference between these two ways of defining E by a sequence. To prove what we want to prove, we need a lemma. So the lemma goes like this. If x and y are positive and x is not equal to y, then I have this inequality, very interesting inequality. Root of this product is less than this thing that looks like a mean. And you think, wow, this is a really alien looking inequality. Where does this come from? But it actually just follows from MGM. If I have um, n positive numbers, x1 to xn, the MGM, or arithmetic geometric mean inequality, tells me the following. The geometric mean of the product, or the geometric mean of all these numbers, is less than or equal to the arithmetic mean. With the following interesting um, twist, if these x, j are not all equal to each other, then this inequality here is strict. So this inequality, less than or equal, become just less than. Okay, now we can go ahead and use this. Let's take the nth root of x times y times y times y and so on. And there's, let's say there's n minus one of these y's. So in all, there's n factors under this root sign. So now use um, MGM. And remember, we postulated here that these two are uh, positive and also that they're not equal and so this inequality is going to be strict. So this is n x plus y plus y plus and so on and we have we have a total of how many of these n minus one of these y's over n. Okay great and uh, let's make that nicer over n. So okay we can now write this neatly like this, x, y, n minus 1, less than x plus n minus 1, 
y over n and there's our lemma this is what we need this is very interesting because it's very interesting that the properties of a n and b n which are sequences that converge to e well the the way to prove these properties or one way to prove these properties is by using mgm is to further illustrate what an amazing inequality mgm really is and i will put a link to a video i did about mgm uh, i prove uh, n way mgm in that video so you should watch that also Okay, let's get back to a n sequence, and from a n we can create this sister sequence, which is similar but not the same. I replace the plus with a minus. And what's interesting about both of these sequences, they both are strictly monotonically interest, uh, increasing. Yes, they're also interesting, but they are monotonically increasing. So it, it's interesting to think about CN because it's a bit counterintuitive why it's increasing since this number is less than one. So that's a bit baffling. But with the magic of mathematics, we can prove it. We don't have to rely on intuition all the time. We can just prove it. So let's prove that AN is, interest, uh, is interesting. Monotonically interesting. Yes, it is interesting. Let's prove that it's increasing. So we'll choose x is 1 and y is 1 plus uh, 1 over n minus 1. We have to take n is greater than or equal to 2 here. The case when n is 1 can be proved by just direct computation, so we don't worry about it. And if we take this x and this y and plug it into the lemma. Okay, you remember the lemma. That was part 2. Right, so let's plug this all in and see what happens. We get this, and we can now start to simplify things. Okay, I just multiplied out some things, and this is, okay, so this is going to be uh, 1 here, so I have 1 plus 1 minus 1, so this is n plus 1 over n, and this is 1 plus 1 over n. Okay, so I can now power both sides to get rid of the root. And I have 1 plus 1 over n minus 1 power n minus 1 is less than, strictly less than, 1 plus 1 over n power n. Notice I chose n minus 1 uh, in order for this to work out to 1 <laughs> magically and also for this denominator to match this power and so everything works magically. So what does this mean? Well, this means a n minus 1. This is the n minus 1th term. The previous term of a is less than the current term of a, a n. And so therefore, a n, and because this is strict, a n is strictly monotone increasing and interesting. Yes. So it's amazing. That's a beautiful proof. Now, of course, I've done the whole thing myself for CN, and it's increasing, but I want you to do it. So what you do is you take the lemma and you apply it in a similar way. It's very, very similar. You just have to make a little adjustment for CN, and everything will work out beautifully. And you will see that CN, contrary to intuition, CN is an increasing sequence. We proved that AN is increasing. Now it's time to prove that BN is decreasing. So the terms of the sequence BN are decreasing strictly monotone. So how do we prove this? Well, we can write BN like this. The nth term, we can write it like this, n plus 1 over n power n plus 1. Now we can do something a bit wacky and write it as 1 over n over n plus 1. All of this is power n plus 1, like so. Right, now we use the following very nice trick, which actually is kind of common in these uh, studies of E. I've, you know, you see this yeah, kind of in places. So we'll add a 1 and subtract a 1 over n plus 1. This is a, 
a nice trick which uh, appears every so often in related topics like this. Okay, so why did I do this? Well, I did this so that this part here can now cancel out. So I got 1 over 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. Okay, power n plus 1. So what is this? This uh, is 1 over c n plus 1. Okay, that's very interesting because, because well, now you see why we need the C, uh, the C sequence. We've used it here. Well, since Cn, uh, since Cn is increasing, well, obviously Cn plus one terms are also increasing, but one over Cn is decreasing, and one over Cn plus one obviously must also be decreasing terms. And so this whole thing, Bn, is decreasing. <laughs> there you go. Therefore, Bn is decreasing. Very beautiful, very beautiful uh, proof, don't you think? I, I like the cute way that the C sister sequence C was used here. So Bn is a decreasing sequence. It is approaching E from above and is getting smaller and smaller like this until it approaches E eventually, someday far in the future, it gets to E. Well, it never gets to E, but it gets as close as you like to E. Now let's look at the A, N, and B, N as sequences as, as a whole, and look at the bounds on these sequences. See, are they bounded, or do they, do they go off into infinity? Uh, you know, they have to be bounded if they if they're converging to E, but we didn't prove that yet. We just proved that this one here is increasing and this one here is de decreasing. So this one here, for all we know, might go to minus infinity and this one might go to plus infinity, for all we know. We need to prove that they are actually bounded. All right, let's look at them again. Let's define delta to be this 1 plus 1 over n. So delta is actually bigger than 1. So uh, because of that, it's clear that delta power n has to be smaller than delta power n plus 1. And so for every n, a n must be strictly less than b n. That's very good to know. So let's compute a1. a1 is 1 plus 1 over 1 power 1, and that's 2. And what is b1? b1 is 1 plus 1 over 1 power 1 plus 1, and that's 4. And so I get bounds beautifully like this, a n strictly less than b n, which is less than or equal to 4. Very beautiful. I know that my sequences are now bounded. And what do you do when you have bounded sequences? Well, you go ahead and you use the monotone convergence theorem. This is one of the most important theorems in mathematics, and I'll get around to doing a video about this uh, in the near future, but we will use it now. So a n is increasing. It's bounded above by 4, which we proved here. So therefore, it has a limit by monotone convergence theorem. Therefore, the limit exists. This limit exists, and we can call this limit e. There we go, we gave it a name. We call this limit E. We've proved that this limit exists. So we can use this as a definition of E. We say that it is the limit of the sequence A n. And now what about B n? Does B n converge to E also? That's easy to prove. There's our trusty expression for B n. We can factor this like this, one plus one over n n times 1 plus 1 over n, an extra one like this. Now let's take the limit of these things. Limit of bn is the limit of these things here, 1 plus 1 over n power n times 1 plus 1 over n. They are well behaved. The limit is just the limit of the products, uh, the individual factors. And so the limit of this is e. And the limit of this is 1, because 1 over n goes to 0, and I just get 1. And the limit is 
E. So I can also use the limit of BN as a definition of E just as well as the AN1. And there you go. There you have it. We have proved what we want to prove. With just a bit more work, you know, you evaluate B2, B3, and so on. A few of those, we can narrow down our uh, discoveries and get something like this. Well, we can narrow this down like this, A, N, uh, and this is less than B, N, because this is um, increasing sequence, and this is now decreasing, so this is less than or equal to four, but with a little bit more work, we can reduce this down to three. Why don't you try that? Just use a calculator or favorite computer program. And since we know that a n is always, always less than e, it approaches e from below, and b n uh, approaches e from above. So this is also true. Then you can put e right in the middle here, and so we've proved that. E is a number which is in between 2 and 3. It's got to be bigger than 2 and less than 3, and in fact, it is. So it's amazing what we were able to prove just by using the lemma, uh, MGM, and a few algebra tricks. We managed to narrow E down into this range between 2 and 3. Very, very amazing. Well, that about wraps it up for this video. This is very important knowledge for anyone into mathematics. You really got to know this inside out because this is fundamental. You will learn exactly what the number E is. As always, like, comment, and subscribe. But I want to leave you with a little project to do. There's our sister sequence, CN. Tell me, what does it converge to? And which way does it approach its limit? And furthermore, why not define another one? dn is 1 minus 1 over n power n plus 1. There. Now you tell me, where does this go? What does this converge to? So do a little study of the sister sequence. Draw some pictures. Write some comments in the, in the comment section. And tell me what you have discovered about the sister sequence and this dn version of it. And I will see you next time.